and thank you for joining us. I'm Nancy Furness, and this is We've Got Issues. We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan, citizens-based forum where we look at issues of interest to the Tri-Cities. And we'd like to thank Tri-Cities Community Television for making these interviews possible. Before we get started, I'd also like to acknowledge that our interviews are taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of Coquitlam First Nations. And we'd like to thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to care for the lands and the waters and all that lies above and below. So today, we're joined by Dustin Chellen, who is running for Port Moody City Council. So thank you so much for joining us today, Dustin. And thanks for having me, Nancy. Well, it's a pleasure, and I'm really looking forward to hearing more about what your vision is for Port Moody. And I was wondering if maybe a good place to start is just learning a little bit more about who you are. So if you could share some of your background and maybe what brought you to run for City Council. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Well, uh, I was born and raised in Calgary in a bit of a conservative community. Uh, and when I was 14, it was pretty clear to me that I was a little bit different. Uh, and so I came out as gay in my high school, and I was one of the first people to do that. Right. Uh, uh, it wasn't the most welcoming of experiences for me. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I am so grateful that I had the opportunity when I was older to come out to Vancouver to pursue mm -hmm. my, my law degree. Uh, okay. Vancouver and Port Moody have just been so welcoming to me. Uh, and so uh, I came out here did a law degree at the University of British Columbia. I had an opportunity to work as a lawyer for a very large law firm, mm -hmm. uh, and then I worked as a lawyer for a very large marketing firm. Uh, I decided that uh, I wanted something a little bit smaller, and so I got into right. technology law. Which is oh, that's been. interesting. Okay. Yeah, I've been doing that for the last few years, and uh, you know, an enjoyable career, but I found I spent a lot of time arguing and a lot of time uh, working with folks uh, that didn't necessarily even want to do sort of the bare minimum, that is, follow the law. Oh, okay. So I'm actually looking for a bit of a career shift. I'm hoping to go back uh, to school to get my PhD in technology law now. Oh, wow. And so I'm working as a researcher for a professor at, at the University of British Columbia's Law School on Capital Markets Law. So what would, how would that change your career, like from being a lawyer? Mm. Um, what? How does that change what you would do? You know, I, I do love the law. I think it's such an interesting mechanism to, to cause social change. Mm -hmm. um, but my perspective is, you know, I, I love the teaching aspect. I really want to help the next generation find ways to understand how the right. law can be used to better humanity. So that's sort of my personal journey. Um, uh, my husband and I moved out to Port Moody about five years ago or okay. so. We originally lived in the Klahani neighborhood. Right, uh, and, okay. And then right before the pandemic hit, we moved to Moody Center. Uh, we have a little townhouse there with our, our one-year-old golden doodle puppy, oh. uh, who's just so sweet. Uh, and I volunteered on uh, Port Moody's Economic Development Committee for the last four years. Right. And their Tourism Committee for the last four years. Because I just fell in love with Port Moody. You know, it is in so many ways the perfect city. It is in the middle of the third largest metropolitan area right. in Canada, and yet it has this small community feel. Mm. You know, you're, you're away from traffic. You are so connected to nature. A beautiful setting, for sure. It Spectacular. is. Spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. That was carry on. Well, I'm, I'm well, just I'm interested to hear more. Thank you, yeah. So the, the reason I decided to run for Port Moody City Council is in part, I had a chance to see that civic politics had gotten a little bit divisive. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked on the Economic Development Committee on a project to bring more jobs to the city. And I didn't really feel like I or other committee members were being listened to. And that was really frustrating for me. Okay. So, so you know, I, I would complain to my husband, but his perspective is, uh, you know, rather than complain, why don't you do something to go fix it? So. Uh, you know, he suggested that, and then a, a lovely woman by the name of Dr. Amy Lubick, who's a, currently a city councillor, suggested I put my name forward. And so, you know, I took some time over the pandemic to really think about, is this something that I want to do? And, you know, I, I really do think that I have a skill set as a lawyer mm -hmm. that will help the city. I know how to negotiate. I know the importance of bylaw and policy. Um, 
And I recognize that listening to people and, and addressing their questions and finding a compromise is is so important. And it's key to working together and moving things forward so that you can get resolution. I'm really interested. I didn't know that Port mm. Moody had a tourism committee. We, can you tell us just very briefly, what do you do? Like yeah. what, what goes on in that committee? Yeah, we do, and uh, I'm so grateful. It's um, uh, chaired by a, a city councillor by the name of Diana Dilworth. And Diana has been just such a, a lovely, kind woman to me. Uh, and I think she has such a great vision for the, the city's tourism industry. All right. You know, I think I fell in love with Port Moody instantly, and I want more people to do that. And so whether right. it's coming to visit our museums or visit our parks or, or right. our trails, you know, I want people to have the opportunity to fall in love with our city. Uh, and it also brings local benefits to our economy, too. So. One of the things that I've worked really closely on is our, our wayfinding strategy, finding ways to help people come to the community and find their way around uh, oh, and so experience new things. What do you mean by wayfinding? Like, is it um, online or signage or? Yeah, particularly in person. You know, right now Port Moody has just so many signs scattered around, mm -hmm. and yet I don't feel like any of them really help people navigate oh, okay. their city. Right. Uh, and so I would love to help more people experience some, so some clearly locations. find their way to wherever they they want to be or wherever they want to go that's right and you know I think especially designing signage so that it's accessible to people of all heights all ages and language capabilities I can appreciate that being very short you know, so important <laughs> um, can you tell me just briefly I think we have a lot to talk about okay. but if you can tell me just briefly what are your top three priorities if you um, are successful in getting onto council what three things would you like to be working on yeah so my three priorities are first I really want to get to work on fixing some of our traffic and parking problems okay uh, I think the city needs to do a little bit more to care for our parks and okay. also prepare for climate change mm. and then the last thing that I care about is I think we need smart growth that can help the whole community. Okay, well, I think each one of those are worth talking about a little bit more. Sure. Um, let's talk about traffic. Yes. What is, what's happening with traffic in Port Moody and what sort of plan or vision do you have for um, sort of grappling with the high levels of traffic, given that we're seeing development in Port Moody, mm. plus we're seeing Coquitlam and Burnaby developing as well with traffic moving through. What are your thoughts on how, how we can manage that? Yeah, you know, we're so growing so quickly in the Lower Mainland, and I feel like Port Moody's traffic plans just haven't been able to keep up. If you take a look at the most recent Transport Moody plan, right. uh, I feel like our traffic planning is fairly underdeveloped. So I would love to work with a consultant to build a long-term plan that's feasible right. and acknowledges the growth that we've had. Uh, and I think uh, it should also inform our development strategy. You know, if our roads, oh, okay. if our roads can't handle development in certain areas, right. that's not where we should be developing. We should be growing in places where our roadways can support it, or around sky trains where folks can take public transit to and from their homes or work. So now, are you talking about densification around um, not putting it in areas where the roads and the infrastructure clearly can't handle that increased? Um, traffic, but putting it on either main thoroughfares that are already developed for traffic or around SkyTrain stations? Yeah, that's exactly right. I think, you know, especially around SkyTrain stations, mm -hmm. that, that is a sensible place for me to add development, whether it be office space or homes, as long as there's good traffic plans, nice architecture right. and programs to preserve local businesses. You know, I, I think that that's a, a thoughtful way that we can grow as a city without adding too much to our traffic. Right. I also think there's just a few small things that we can do, like adjusting the timing of traffic signals along St. John's oh, Street. Oh, some very pragmatic, practical, okay. Yeah, or I, I'd love to see uh, building a, a bridge from Murray Street onto Clark Street to help reroute some local traffic so that they aren't just jammed on St. Right. John's Street. You know, traffic's bad for your mental health, mm -hmm. and it's also bad for the environment when you're just stuck in, in a traffic jam. Absolutely. And I think um, I, you just, I have so many things I want to ask you. Mm. One thing you um, said was thoughtful um, development. When you, mm. can you tell me a little bit more what you mean by that? What is thoughtful development? Do we have too much development going on or not enough? Or should it be something done some other way? Like, 
Yeah. Just your thoughts on development. You know, development is such a complex issue, and I really worry in this election, um, and with this last council, that we've sort of broken it up into more or less. And I think yes. my perspective is, I, you know, I don't, I don't think that that's, it's as black and white as that. I think, look, we have a housing affordability crisis that's affecting especially our young people, but right. also our seniors. And so I think we need to take actions in order to build a bigger complement of affordable housing, more diverse housing that's suitable for families, that includes enough bedrooms or, or yard space to be able to grow a family. Okay. And I also think we need seniors housing in Port Moody. We don't Which have any. Which is something that I haven't heard very many people talking about. We um, tend to focus on young families not being able to get into housing, but I don't think very many people are talking about the other end of the spectrum with the seniors housing. So um, is there more you can share on that? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, um, uh, I've been dealing with some family issues and, and my grandma had to sell her house and, and move into an assisted living right. facility. And so I recognize that for so many people, that stage of life can be hard. And I think for those that grew up in Port Moody or have lived here for a long time, we need a place where they can live okay. in Port Moody. Uh, so uh, you're talking about aging in, in place. That's right. Of. And, okay. you know, my perspective, there's a proposal to build seniors housing near Kyle Centre. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's a great opportunity to uh, co-locate it with a recreational space. Oh, because there's a lot of senior programs going on already at Kyle Centre, from what I understand. So that's right. that makes sense to have it in proximity there. That's right. The other place that I think makes a lot of sense for seniors housing is um, near City Hall. Uh, because it's so close to grocery stores, mm -hmm. coffee shops, uh, mm -hmm. the recreation facility, and the hospital. And, you know, I think being close to healthcare facilities as you age is, yeah. at least it's something that's important to me. And so is this part of thoughtful development? Because it sounds like you've put a lot of thought into um, where things will be developed, you not know, just that we need development. And, and I think that's exactly it, is that, um, you know, unfortunately the city has some very short-term development plans. And I think that's right. kind of the root of our problem that we're ah, seeing. Okay. What's happening is developers are purchasing parcels of land and saying, here, this is what I think the plan should be for the city. Uh, but as a lawyer, I know that's kind of backwards. The Local Government Act says right. it's actually the city that's supposed to be building the long-term plan. And so places like Burnaby do a great job of having a long-term plan that's lasted for decades. Right. I would love to see Port Moody build something that can last for more than just a political election cycle. Our last one was built in 2014, next one amended in 2017, and now we're doing it again. I'd like something that lasts longer. So an official community plan, mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts that we should? it should be updated and then the sort of parameters for what developers what's expected of developers should be part of that official community plan? Yeah, very much so. I think, you know, we've got an opportunity now to come mm -hmm. together as a community to have a conversation. What do we want our right. city to look like in the next 15, 20 years? Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to listen to the community, build some consensus, uh, and also listen to experts like city right. planners. Uh, and traffic planners while we build that So bring that in plan. some expertise. Very much so. But then once Not we that get... we don't have expertise, but to bring in some outside expertise to look at maybe different options. Exactly. Um, the, I, yeah, the, some of your ideas are really, um, really interesting. Hmm. I think you also talked about a vibrant seafront and was that vibrant seafront, I think something like that. And then you were talking about connecting different parts of the city. Like, can you talk about your vision for a vibrant seafront? What, what would we change? Yeah, I think, you know, so many people have been drawn to Port Moody, myself included, because of our natural environment. And mm -hmm, I think for sure. Rocky Point Park in particular is just sort of the, the gem of our community. Right. I think we need to do a little bit more to take care of our parks, and so that includes maintenance, uh, ensuring that garbage is picked up adequately. But I also think there's an opportunity to expand Rocky Point Park westward, because as our city grows, we need the park space right. to... Uh, there's a lot of pressure on those parks. Exactly, and for those And with people parks. coming in from outside of Port Moody as well to use those park spaces. Well, and I think it is such a, a tourist draw as well, and so if we can... Uh, turn Rocky Point Park or, or manage Rocky Point Park in a way that is inviting to tourists, 
still has capacity for locals, but then you've got local shops and services nearby that benefit from tourists who may have mm -hmm. taken the SkyTrain or West Coast Express in. You know, I think that'll benefit our, our whole city. I also think we need to invest in some upgrades to our, our infrastructure along the shoreline. Um, like, because it, can you give some examples? So I would love to see a, an upgrade to some of our boardwalks uh, okay. uh, on the eastern side of Rocky right. Point Park. Uh, and I think, you know, I, I imagine being able to start on where the sawmill site is now and start a walk there with your dog or your loved ones, go right. all the way across to the edge of the inlet, all the way up to Old Orchard. You know, I think... Oh, right around. Yes. I think being able to, to sort of uh, take in the inlet, mm -hmm. not just over 15 minutes, but over 45 minutes right. would be Make lovely. it a destination. Make it a destination, but also make it a place where, you know, you can appreciate nature and take mm -hmm. care of your own mental health. I think during the pandemic, we all realized we need to be out in, in nature a lot more than we are. I think you're right. Now, you've brought up mental health a couple of times mm -hmm. now and connected it to the spaces where we live. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I heard you say that being out in nature is very important to our mental health. Are we doing enough to protect the natural spaces in Port Moody? Yeah, you know, I think I'm not satisfied that we're doing enough. And in particular, what worries me is this last city council approved a development that's going to, to tear down just a massive swath of the, the Chines forest. Uh, mm -hmm. And while I think, don't get me wrong, building housing is important, right. um, building a, a large condo at the end of a single lane road by cutting down a forest, mm -hmm. I don't think is the right idea. We need to preserve those forests for generations to come uh, so that we can take some time away from the hustle and bustle of day-to-day -day life. And, right. you know, uh, one of the great things about Port Moody is you can go to places where you don't feel like you're in one of the third biggest cities in Canada. Right. And also, I think when we talk about trees and natural spaces, mm. our mental health, also our physical well-being, if we talk about climate change, oh. um, it's incredibly important to keep those big trees, at least some of those big trees in place in the city. Uh, I mean, they, they have so much history, right? And I think... Mm. As a young person, one of the things that I really appreciate is being able to, to recognize that I am, I am right. still young and that there is so much history that has gone behind us. Right. I think we need to see more indigenous art in our community too, because that reflects that you know, there have been people on our lands since time immemorial. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think we need to recognize that we are just a, a small part of the people that will take care of these lands for Right, our years. history is very short here. So, uh, talking about reconciliation, mm. um, are we taking enough meaningful action at the municipal level uh, to address reconciliation? And if not, what can we do? What more should we be doing? Yeah, so my, my perspective is, um, uh, if I can tell a little bit of a story, you know, Absolutely. reconciliation is an interesting word. And my personal perspective mm -hmm. is, you know, in the legal context, when you have a, say, a husband and wife that, that don't get along, the courts ask them to reconcile their differences. Irreconcilable differences, yes. Right. Okay. Um, but when you have an abusive spouse, the court doesn't ask you to reconcile your differences. And I think, you know, reconciliation is important, but I also think right. we ought to talk about things like decolonization. What does it mean for us as settlers to make space for indigenous mm -hmm. people to really showcase their connection with and governance over the land? So one of the things that's really important to me is I, if I'm elected, I would love to work with the First Nations uh, that have a connection to the land in Port Moody uh, to have a council committee on indigenous relations uh, where their voice is meaningfully heard at the council table. You're talking about having First Nations participate at a government-to-government -government level. Yes. Why haven't we seen, I mean, I, you can't answer that, I guess, but why haven't we seen that already? You know, I, I, I don't know, um, uh, but I do think, you know, reconciliation is so much more than just a land acknowledgement. Yes. It really is about yes. recognizing that it, we have a shared responsibility mm -hmm. to protect and care for these lands. And, uh, you know, uh, I think including their voices in, in a governance structure yes. is just one of the few ways that we can start to slowly repair that relationship. Yeah. No, I, I, there's a lot of thought put into that, and it's really nice to hear um, some of that coming through, you know, 
at a, at, at a council level and a municipal level because it has to come through everywhere, right? All our systems, there's systemic problems and things that we need to change. And municipal level is one place where those changes can be made mm. um, and they can be made relatively quickly compared to, you know, other levels of government. I'm, I'm hopeful, you know, it's, it's just such an important part of our history. And I think yes. the more time we spend ignoring it, yeah. Um, the worse that, that that problem, that wound on our collective conscience will be. So, right. Uh, thanks for asking about that. Well, thank you for sharing because I, it's wonderful to hear. Um, so we're going to move away a little bit and talk about fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, we're going to cover a huge <laughs> range with you. I've looked through your platform and it's very well developed and you've put a lot of thought into a lot of different areas. Mm -hmm. uh, so one area about the fiscal management, and you say that we can't keep placing the burden of, um, you know, the tax burden on property taxes, and, and it, there's only so much you can do there. We have to start looking at other ways to handle that tax burden. Um, what are some of the other ways that you see, or what would you like to see um, with respect to sharing that tax burden or somehow handling it? Yeah, you know, I think especially now with inflation and the housing affordability crisis, to keep mm -hmm. asking property owners to fork over more and more in property taxes, right. is, it's just hard on households, right? The households are Absolutely. already struggling to pay for, for food and groceries. I think you know, one of the big challenges in Port Moody is we used to have a fairly strong industrial and, and commercial tax right. base with some of the mills nearby. Right. But as we've lost the steel mill and the sawmill and, and the Andres wine Burrard facility, Thermal and Burrard Thermal, um, uh, what's happened is our industrial taxpayers have dropped. The city, city still has to provide services, so right. naturally residential property taxes have increased. On the Economic Development Committee, I was a, a really big advocate for doing more mm -hmm. to bring in businesses. We don't have enough space for businesses in our city. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, but I am hopeful that, you know, the city just approved an economic development master plan. It's the first time it's done that. Uh, and I'm hopeful that we can do some meaningful things to help bring in local businesses. Because, of course, they will help offset the, the residential property tax burden, but they also provide great local jobs for, for youth and others. Right. Uh, and, you know, I think the important thing around businesses is they help bring a a liveliness to our community, whether it's mm -hmm. shops or services or healthcare services or daycares. And you know? sometimes bringing people in from other communities to work. Very much so. So what kind of businesses would you like to see or does it matter? Would you like to see like commercial, industrial, a mix uh, or do you, does the municipal level even have control? over that. Yeah, so my perspective is I think it's a municipality's job to zone land for commercial, industrial, light industrial, um, and, and sort of retail and office. Um, I don't think it's the city's job to hand pick which businesses mm -hmm. come to our city. In my perspective, I think, you know, we've got the West Coast Express station and it's the first one before downtown here. Yes. Uh, I think in 20 years, we're going to see folks from Mission or Pitt Meadows or Maple Ridge actually get off on the West Coast Express at Moody Center Station, go to work in an office or a light industrial building that backs onto the train right. tracks, okay. shop at our local businesses, and then hop back on the West Coast Express to go home. So I'm hopeful that office space around Moody Center Station will help um, liven up our downtown. I think light industrial spaces belong sort of facing the train tracks or Barnett. Oh, right. Yes, that's, I think, again, thoughtful development, right? You're considering people who live in the community and where those light industrial, um, the proximity to industrial sort of um, facilities or employers. So. That's right. You know, the Metro Vancouver has a shortage of industrial land and I think, mm. you know, next to rail station or the railway makes sense uh, because there may be added noise from light right. industrial. And so keeping that in an area where it won't upset residents, I think is really important. I also think, you know, there may be added traffic from shipping and so keeping it close to a highway like Barnett Highway right. is important so that our streets don't get clog. There's so many pieces to the puzzle and it just sounds like you've put a lot of thought into how to put those puzzle pieces together that make sense. Um, one other thing I just want to touch on is climate change. Yes. 
Um, we're dealing with heat domes, atmospheric rivers, we're seeing more extreme weather events. Yes. Do you think, are we prepared? Is Port Moody prepared for what could be coming at us this winter or next summer? No, I don't, I don't think we are. And you know, we've seen the power of nature over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think ultimately, uh, we need to put our money where our mouth is when it right. comes to climate change. I would love to see the city contribute more to a capital reserve okay. uh, to be used in the event of a, an extreme weather event or climate emergency. Um, because if there is a flood or a, a wildfire, we don't have time to, right. to go and raise funds or hope that the province comes in or the federal government comes in to support. It all takes time, yes. We need to be able to you know, get citizens their sandbags or, or exactly. you know, bring in firefighters or uh, what have you. Because, you know, the climate is unfortunately for the next generation so much more unpredictable and, and mm -hmm. we need to get ready for it and we need to start saving for it now, I think. Well, and I think we had a little bit of a brutal wake up call with the heat dome and we lost a number of people. Um, you know, we just weren't prepared. No. So it sounds like you're saying we need to have that contingency plan in place so that we've got access to those funds um, to, you know, do things like open cooling centers and having shelters and dealing with floods or, or whatever the issue is. That's right. And don't get me wrong, I don't think the only thing the city should be doing is, is just getting ready for climate change. Uh, of course. You know, obviously, we have an yes. obligation to prevent it too. And I'm really proud of some of the things that the city has done, like its plastic bag ban mm -hmm. um, or single-use plastics ban. Uh, as well as our updated sustainability report card. You know, I think Port Moody is actually setting a great example for other municipalities. We really think about, for every project, are we building something that's going to last both economically, environmentally, culturally, socially? Is this going to last yes, for generations? Yes. And not I think just for four years. Not just for four years yeah. and not just for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to build a city that's going to last. And I think you know, climate change is certainly an important part of that, but I think yeah. sustainability overall, thinking for future generations is is important to me. Because as a young person, I didn't always feel like people were thinking about right. you know, building the best world for me. And I always thought that I would leave a better world than I came into it. And I sometimes have to ask myself, are we? Am I? Yeah. Um, our time is running out, but I have so much more I want to talk to you about. Um, just one more question. Uh, Quick question, or well, two more quick questions. Parks, do we have enough parks? How do we make our parks more inclusive? Mm, great questions, you know, uh, do we have enough parks? I think we've got a lot of environmental space, um, but Rocky Point Park is quickly filling up. I would love right. to see Rocky Point Park expanded. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's underserved neighborhoods that don't have adequate park space, like Glen Eyre um, or Noons Creek area. Uh, I think we need active park spaces because physical activity is so important. Right. Um, and and again, know, for our mental health, not uh, only physical health. Very much right? so. Uh, and dog parks. You know, yes. I think for so many folks, uh, a dog is family and, and making sure that we have safe, separated spots for dogs mm. to be able to socialize and owners to be able to socialize is important well, too. And you know, I only learned just very recently that Port Moody only has one dog park and I was really surprised to hear that. I actually, uh, I, I, this might not be the right thing to say, I actually think we have, have two. There's ah. a small off-leash dog park just on the north of Moody Centre, but I think we've got a lot more that okay. we need to do in order to serve other communities in Port Moody, mm -hmm. um, because dogs bring us together in lots right. of ways. Right, right. Um, uh, you know, I think as we build out our official community plan, we need to purposefully design spaces and set aside park spaces right. um, that make sense with the growth of our community. I think everyone should have access to be at large parks, active parks, or even small parklets where they can right. just go for a, a coffee or, or let their kids play. Something in their neighborhood. That's right. Yeah. I have one final question, and it's something that we always include in our interviews and it's um, just talking a little bit about respectful workplace. We've, you've already covered reconciliation mm. so what I'd like to focus on just for a couple of minutes is um, respect around the council table. Um, how 
do you plan to work with your peers, your colleagues, to ensure that there's a safe and respectful workspace there? Yeah, you know, uh, I feel as though the last four years have been not really representative of Port Moody as a whole. I've had a chance right. to knock on about 1,500 doors, and we are such a wonderful, thoughtful, caring community, and I haven't necessarily seen that reflected at our council table. And so as a lawyer, one of the things that I know is that you know, we could disagree vehemently, right. but it's not a disagreement with you as a person. It's right. an it's issue. It's not personal. It's yes. not. No. So you have to be hard on the problem, right. not on the people. Uh, and so I think taking time to listen, to really understand people's concerns right. and address them. You need to find a, a collaborative solution that meets everyone's concerns mm. and move forward. You can't take an approach of it, you know, it's my way or the highway. Right. Don't and dig I, your heels in too quickly. No. and yeah. And... You know, I think even though you might disagree, recognizing that we are all just people that care so deeply about our city uh, and that we ought to treat each other, not just with respect, but I think with reverence and mm -hmm. kindness and love, I think is so important. And so, you know, I have tried my best to, with the existing candidates, reach out and, and build that relationship now in case I am elected. But I, I really do think, you know, citizens look to their city council as a representative of who you are as a community and I think yeah we need to do a much better job of being collaborative kind and thoughtful well we're going to end on that note and I thank you so much Dustin for coming in mm -hmm. and sharing some of your vision and your ideas um, and your hopes for seeing Port, Movie, Port Moody move ahead. Really appreciate it. Um, and so thank you, and I hope that we can talk again in the future. Thank you so much, Nancy. I really appreciate your thoughtful questions and, and to everyone here as well for your, your work. So okay. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. This is We've Got Issues, and we've been speaking to Dustin Chellen, who is running for Port Moody City Council.